Alright guys, welcome back. Today we have another review of a DSA Armored Sword. This one, one of DSA's most recent designs, the Baron. And I have to say, guess what's back? It's back! Everything else is pretty nice. So, here we go. Alright. DSA's Baron is another one of DSA's hand and a half swords. And I have to say that as far as hand and a half swords go, what the whole idea being is that it can be used very much in one hand as well as a handle long enough for two. This one comes the closest to that description. And it really goes to what I think is becoming one of DSA's strengths. And that is these lighter hand and half swords. So let's take a look. Now as you guys saw when I just opened up. We had a bit of an issue with this sword. When I first drew it out of the scabbard. A wad of foam came out that looked like it was about here. I tried putting, uh, pulling the sword out and bleh, out came this wad of foam. After that, it rattled terribly in the scabbard. Now, is that indicative of what DSA is now doing to make their scabbards fit a little bit better by putting some foam in there to cinch it up, maybe. And maybe this one kind of eat past some quality control as far as that foam being placed in the right part of the scabbard and not being glued in right, whatever the case. The scabbard itself still is very nice. It just rattles a whole lot. So, be that as it may, that's the deal with the scammer. Now, on to the blade. This thing moves wonderfully. This actually has the same handle configuration, only longer, as the 15th century hand and half sword. It's about an inch or so longer in the handle. So it really has extended that design. The hilt very kind of almost stubby hilt, but kind of rounded off uh, uh, quillions here, which is very nice. You have the double fullers, and they go almost right here to the tip, which is an interesting design. I don't know how historical that is, but this is very much the, it feels very much a hand and half sword, meaning you can have a shield and be using this and you'll be just fine. This is weighted so that could do that. So for those thinking, okay, you know, it's another one of their hand and half that really means two hands design, not this time. This time we are looking at a true hand and half sword. The blade is a little on the short side, it's a little over 30, 31, 32 inches long, very light, very stiff, very, this is a very rigid blade. Now for those that think, oh, it's not going to cut that well, well, it cut average. Now that's average for DSA swords which have a habit of not coming very well sharp. Some better than others. I've owned several of them, and I can say that the sharpening on DSA swords is inconsistent at best. However, when they get it right, you get a very nicely sharpened sword. They didn't get it quite that good with this one. It's okay. Um, I can still feel the, the catching, which is mean they gave it a nice once through 
across the sander to give it just a little bit of bite, which is nice. I have to say though, um, <clears throat> after working around a while with this sword, not really my type, but doesn't mean it's any less well constructed. They've got probably one of the nice peens on the end of the sword that I have ever seen. By the way, speaking of construction elements, this one did come with an added perk. For, a year, for about a year now, I have been asking for actual production photos of swords that I have been ordering through uh, Dark Sword Armor. I finally got some with this one showing them uh, building the handle and you can see clearly the very heavy tang that is under here and uh, watching them assemble the handle. Didn't see any forging pictures but I did see them putting together the handle. While the sword was very nice and I look at the space here between the hilt and the blade there is some but there, it's actually here another side of the actual sharpened edge of the blade not on the planes of the blade so they've got that cinched up very nicely but it's here where the blade is actually you know extending outward where there is some space the, the the jury is still out as to whether or not that's good or a bad thing but the nice thing is you don't see any uh, epoxy or anything kind of bubbling up through here it's nice and clean so overall I'd say if you want a very quick sword if you really want a very quick hand and a half sword from uh, them and you're looking at Dark Sword Armor this one, their uh, Knight Medieval Bastard Sword, or my personal favorite, the 15th Century Hand and Half Sword, are all three that you should take a look at. So, another very solid build from DSA. Look forward to the um, uh, some commentary from a couple other people about this sword from both. Matt Jensen and Matt Easton, as well as my own cutting footage. Um, the unboxing footage for this was included in a previous video where we looked at a number of DSA swords being unboxed. So I hope you enjoy all that, and um, we'll see you next time. Bye bye for now. I wanted to include this little bit of footage here from um, from the unboxing just to give you kind of another reminder or another up close look at the Baron. Um, the sword had a very nice overall look, but then again, I will admit a bit of a bias towards DSA's general overall aesthetic. And I'm playing with some camera footage here, trying to get a little better look at the sword. Uh, that's a really nice look at the ping at the end of the sword. I thought it was very nicely done um, in comparison with some of their other swords. It just had a nice overall look. Now, I will admit that aesthetically, I wasn't that fond of the uh, double fullers going all the way to the end of the sword. I've seen other sword designs with that feature that I thought looked better, but that's just kind of a uh, subjective aesthetic opinion that I have of the design. Um, the way it's been put together, as you guys can see here, They've cinched up the connection, right, that base um, between the hilt and the very base of the ricasso of the blade uh, very nicely. The transition 
thought the whole sword is very nice, of course. Very familiar handle style from their 15th century hand half sword. They simply elongated that design. It's a very comfortable design uh, for handling a very quick sword. As of this review, Matthew Eason at School of Gladiatory as of yet has not released his full testing footage. So all this is right now at the time I made this video was kind of an introduction. And his overall view of the sword was that he liked it. He liked the comfort of the handle. He liked the, the, the way the sword looked. He dates it as a, a, a poor, uh, 15th century uh, era sword. He commented on the peen being rather nice. He did say that according to his research, he couldn't find any exact uh, historical examples that this sword may be based upon Although, as I have suspected, there are stylistic elements that DSA has uh, used to create this. So individually, we might see some historical references like the double further blade, so on and so forth. Uh, he mentioned how well it handles, um, how rather rigid the blade was. But one of his uh, kind of parting comments was in looking at how the blade was uh, shaped, didn't find it prominent to be a very sharp blade and suspected that it wouldn't cut very well. Um, and that evidence has kind of been borne out. Matthew Jensen had also uh, gotten a sample of this design. And he actually, one of his main comments was that he found it a very nice sword to handle. Uh, he really enjoyed that aspect. Um, he didn't know how sharp it would really be, not knowing how it would cut but he liked how it was overall constructed. Um, he mentioned that um, he didn't notice any kind of, uh, as he always puts it, uh, shimmers, uh any epoxy kind of bubbling up through the version he had right at the handle. One of the things he's mentioning right here is that in his actual testing, he will be putting the quillions um, through a decent amount of abuse. And just mentioning how he really did enjoy it. And this is something Easton mentioned too. They really uh, have uh, mentioned quite a bit how much better uh, DSA has gotten concerning their handles and just the overall handling of their swords. Um, so those are some very important refinements when we're looking at not just this design, but also DSA as a brand as well. Then he talks about how well it flexes. Easton's mentioned the uh, same thing. Now, along with this, I wanted to include these. These are some pictures that I got from DSA showing the construction of the sword. So just a little window here into what they did with this exact one I got. Okay, so finally some cutting with the Baron from Dark Sword Army. 
So again, shaking the scabbard is kind of showing that how uh, loose the scabbard is. One thing I wanted to show here is how light the sword is. And just showing where I um, kind of put my hand out here as if to hold a buckler, shield, or perhaps a secondary weapon, short sword, or dagger. And how really you could use this very much as a um, as a hand to have sword. It has a short enough blade where you can do that, and a long enough handle is if you decide to ditch that secondary um, uh, piece, you then can go with uh, the blade by itself. Cutting with this sword was a bit of an effort. These heavier juice bottles really did put on a fight with this sword. And I'm hitting next, I'm hitting heavier plastic. I didn't do that great of a chum on some of these didn't cut all right, but most of them simply mashed. So when we look at the factory edge that both Easton and Jensen mentioned, it seems as though that for this design they were correct and that was it is not the greatest cutting sword at least out of the box that um at least i've ever gotten from from dsa now with some of the lighter targets yeah it'll cut and um, so there's there's that so overall cutting experience with this and eh, it was all right, I gave it a C to C minus. Now it's made of high carbon spring steel. Clean it off, wash it off, oil it, have it ready so you can play with again another day.